Thank you very much. For attending this meeting, it is very important for us to share with the news, to share with media, those who covers the UN. We want to be very brief. Uh, we, uh, we have very important information to share. We're here because due to the establishment of yesterday's International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace. It is a date very important, 24 April, for celebrating, commemorating every year. It is beautiful at, that, at a time when unilateralism is attempting to those countries who are facing God knows how many death and destruction on the last years. Now the non aligned movement uh, upon a proposal from its chair, Venezuela, proposed the General Assembly to adopt a date to establish multilateralism and diplomacy for peace. I mean, all that is uh, in face of the doctrine that has been tried to be imposed by the United States to implement a unilateral doctrine around the world and even within the United Nations. You must recall that a couple of weeks ago, the Vice President of the U.S., Mike Pence, came to the Security Council, which met uh, due to the situation in Venezuela. Without having listened to any other intervention, he sat down and started to repeat his uh, statement and his discourse of domination on the basis of the Monroe Doctrine about the appropriation of Venezuela's resources. And at that time, they uh, highlighted that they will achieve at the UN that the credentials of the Venezuelan delegations will be revoked by the majority of the delegations, then uh, recognizing that they are in an extortion and coercion uh, strategy to impose their dictatorship in, even within the UN. The response of the UN, of the vast majority of the United Nations was precisely the establishment of yesterday's meeting, which concluded today in the commemoration of the International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace, which coincides with the date of the conclusion of that Afro Asian Conference uh, in 1955, which served as the basis for establishing the, the non-aligned movement and its 10 bandum principles, which uh, are the same as those contained in the UN Charter. But now I want to share with you something different. We're coming here to denounce, to make an important denounce. It's something we shared yesterday with the Secretary General Antonio Guterres. We want to share, we, we will share it today with the PGA, Maria Fernanda Espinosa and which we have done, been doing, uh, President Maduro has been doing so. It is our time to declare ourselves in campaign for the denounce, for world, the world to know and understand the devastating effects of the unilateral illegal blockade, the arbitrary blockade that the U.S. government has imposed on Venezuela for now over four years formally since 2017, and which have effectively had consequences, humane consequences, in lives, in suffering. And we will uh, explain on the basis of this information. You know that this started with President Barack Obama, who signed the executive order on 8 March 2015, declaring Venezuela an unusual and extraordinary threat to its national security, to the people of the U.S. What an affirmation, a baseless affirmation. Venezuela is not a threat for no country, no neighbor country, much less for the U.S., the most powerful country around the world. It opened, it, it was the framework for a, a a much more extremist government as that from President Trump to approve and issue decrees, executive orders from President Trump with sanctions. I will not refer here to in sanctions targeting individuals because that has been uh, a game of the right wing 
and the Venezuelan right-wing opposition because they say that the sanctions are not against the economy, but they're targeted against individuals. That's fake. They do exist, but they do not have any repercussion because these uh, members of the state do not have any properties in, in the U.S. or in Canada. That's something... It's a hatred sign against uh, individuals, members of the administration. What, what do have an effect is the sanctions against our economy, and we have to say it in this way. The social model of the Venezuelan revolution, which uh, Commander Chavez uh, developed, when we take away the income from oil to the the right wing and to the transnational in the US and their government starting in 1999, please recall 1991, 2000, 2001, 2002, the coup of etat. Given the, the big uh, differences between the bourgeoisie and, and, and the revolution for controlling the national income. It's either for the government, for the state and the people or for the bourgeoisie. If it's on the people, then it will be invested in health, education, housing, infrastructure, culture, investment for production, which is what President Chavez did with his development plan, his national plan, Simon Bolivar, to invest the, the resources of the state on the people with the doctors who used to be Cuban, but they now are Venezuelans all around the country. The centers uh, for comprehensive diagnosis, the schools, free system, free education system with education, education even for master degrees from kindergarten, elementary school, high school, uh, college, and even master's degree. Education is free in Venezuela because uh, the resources were invested on our social uh, policy. It is not the same model as in Vietnam or Chinese. It's the Venezuelan socialism, the Bolivarian model. You must uh, take a look uh, at, the, at the statistics of any other nation and how the, the revolution flourished and Venezuelans had their human rights guaranteed. The attacks of these sanctions, uh, well known as sanctions, but they do not have any authority to, to sanction any other country, any moral, any moral authority to do so. That's the model that they're implementing at the heart of our model, because they want to say that our model is uh, it's not working, and it cannot provide for the well-being of the Venezuelan people from a socialist standpoint. It's bombing. It's, it's a war. It's a war on information, a diplomatic warfare. And you're well aware of it here at the UN, at the OAS, which thankfully we are withdrawing. We, we took that decision two years ago, something that will happen this coming Saturday, and we will be out of the organization. The U.S. and their satellite governments gave a fight there. There's also an economic warfare that is there, and there's a real war of, for financing violence, conspiration, for a coup d'etat, for financing parallel governments, for training attempts of uh, assassination against the president and high-level officials from the government. Those sanctions that blockade has hampered the national development and the capacity to import. We have millions, I will demonstrate it in the coming minutes, the millions of millions of euros and dollars that we have blocked in international banks. It's very curious because in this economic warfare, it's not only the, the United States and its public institutions but it's also the pressure against the financial sector, against the private banking, which is fundamentally private, to reject and to work with Venezuela. They have to reject working with Venezuela. 
so that they do not dare working with Venezuela. It's something that uh, experts call the overcompliance. And even though it's not uh, expressly said in the executive orders, the financial institutions, they fear whenever they see sanctions against Venezuela. And every time they see the name of our country, they, they do not want to work with us. Even if it's for financing, health, vaccinations, food, it is a cruel criminal aggression against Venezuela. Just to go quickly over these numbers, there's, there have been some remarks from the, from the U.S. State Department. This, this was in January, and someone said, the campaign of pressure is working. Financial sanctions against the government of Venezuela have uh, made it to, to become into default. Even in PDVSA, and what we're seeing is a total collapse, an economic collapse in Venezuela. Then our policy is working, our strategy is working. This is something that a, a staff, a, a member of the State Department said. Well, the strategy is working because the economy is uh, is suffering, but what about the suffering of the people? Because there are no no medicines, no vaccination sometimes because of the blockade against the resources. Is that possible to accept in the world at this time? Which authority gas has the UN invested upon the, the United States to violate this charter, the Article 2.4 or Article 41? Because the Security Council has not taken any decision to sanction Venezuela. It has not taken any. So how could the U.S. say that they sanction and sanction with a blockade, an in unjust blockade against our country without fulfilling the procedures of this charter, which we must respect because the U.N. it's a member or is it not? How could you be seated in a chair in the Security Council The, he the headquarters is in U U.S. territory, and then you are not respecting the minimum provisions of this charter. We have to ask this to ourselves. Now, to go very quickly over this. Executive order. I want you to, to go over this in detail. You who are listening to us from Latin America, all transactions for finding financing resources for the Republic are forbidden for debts, bonds, credits, drafts, exception of bankers, uh, invoices, and commercial bonds. All this is to impede that we can do transactions to buy, to import uh, for our people. Another executive order, it forbids the financing and other, and other transactions in whatever uh, currency, even digital currencies. That was to impact uh, a currency we were creating, the Petro, to do transactions without being hit by the blockade. Well, Petro wasn't even established and, and President Trump was signing an executive order to impede that it would work, but it has been working and we will soon see it in action. Another uh, executive order for Vivian transactions in which assets from the government are put as uh, collateral. In which uh, Venezuelan state has 50% or over uh, of the actions in those in those assets. Those cannot be part of a collateral for financing Venezuela. This is another executive order that includes the national development of Venezuela and, and institutions in which that bank has over 50% of property. That's the Van de in Uruguay, the Bicentenario Bank in Venezuela, and the Bank of Venezuela, which is the, the largest bank institution in Venezuela, and another bank in Bolivia. 
we cannot use Venezuelan public banking to, to do transactions, to import. We cannot use dollar. Dollar is forbidden in Venezuela. To use it is forbidden. We have, we have had to switch to other more volatile as the run. That has a consequence of over a million uh, lost in resources. There's an offensive against Venezuela. And most recently, there was another round of sanctions, another set of sanctions. They're very proud of them. These ones are against the Central Bank of Venezuela, forbidden that it makes uh, transactions in U.S. dollar. Who would think to attack the, the national, the treasury, the central bank of a country? So it cannot fulfill uh, with importation of goods and services to fulfill the needs of the, of the population. It is, as what Mr. Abrams said, I have said it publicly, that now the coup has failed, they are going for the economic uh, crisis, collapse of, of our nation. But what about the kids, the children, patients with HIV, with chem chemotherapy, with dialysis? What about surgeries that have to be suspended? I leave this here for the reflection.